Good morning, afternoon, evening, midnight to everyone. Welcome to, uh, on behalf of the Society of American Archivists International Archival Affairs Section Leadership, welcome to another installment of Archival Landscape Seminars. I am Professor Karen Trivett, I, I, sorry, IAAS, Junior Co-Chair and Steering Committee Member and Full Professor Head of Special Collections and College Archives, a part of the library here at the Fashion Institute of Technology, one of 64 campuses of the State University of New York. The Archival Landscapes virtual seminar series actually began in 2020, so we've got a bit of a track record now. In each seminar, an international guest speaker or speakers, as the case may be, introduces audiences to the issues and advancements uh, in their local context while describing the history, operating environment, and unique aspects of archival practice in their country. IAAS is especially honored today to thank Dr. Caroline Brown, who would be representing our partner for today's uh, session, the International Council on Archives section of University and Research Institution Archives, or SUV. Dr. Brown is the chair of the section, and in her absence, the IAAS senior co-chair and ICA SUV Bureau leadership member Ellen Ingseth will tell the audience a little bit about SUV. Ellen, the floor is yours. Thank you. Hello, everybody. From uh, This is Dakota Territory. I'm at the University of Minnesota in the USA. And I am, as Karen just explained, wearing two hats today, one as the senior co-chair of IAAS. And well, with Karen, welcome you um, in that regard. And also, I'm on the steering bureau or the executive committee of ICA SUV, the section on university and research institutions. Um, the goal, uh, the goals of SUV is to promote professional and scholarly exchange really at the global level here and to connect us and um, share educational opportunities and professional engagement. Um, with each of us and to encourage that network. So we're really happy to have been invited uh, to participate here today. And we'll put a link up, Kate, thank you. Karen has already put a link into the chat if you'd like to learn more about the SUV and our projects and potentially join us. Thank you. Thank you, Ellen, and thank you everyone from SUV. Um, just some housekeeping points before we launch in. Please mute your microphones if you haven't already and close video transmission so we can free up uh, some bandwidth. Feel free to write any questions as our presenters uh, speak to us today in the chat box, and we will address those if possible at the end of today's program. Now, the most important part, our esteemed guest today. Um, for the winter seminar, we have Professor Shirley. Franco, who's the coordinator of the archival science course at the University of Brasilia's College of Information Science, and uh, her esteemed professor, Johanna Smith of the University of Sao Paulo. And uh, I just want to welcome you professors to today's forum. Um, I will certainly let you know when you have about five minutes remaining, um, and then uh, segue to Q&A when we have about 10 minutes remaining. So for now, the floor is yours. I begin? Yes. Yeah. So uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Very hard, honored to be here and I'll try to launch my presentation. I hope it will work. It is successful. Yes? Oh. Yes. So I'm happy. That's <laughs> a, <laughs> Let's go on. So the next one. Uh, I thank you again. It's for us, for me, a great opportunity to honor a little two teachers we lost last year. And uh, we're still trying to find ourselves again with these losses. So I'm going to speak about Eloisa Bellotto. 
I know uh, Shirley will speak about her also. And Ana Maria Camargo, they are the, our two founding masters. You have your founding fathers, we had our founding masters. Uh, we, they did a lot, but I, I'll try to highlight only the contributions is the most important and how this shaped our conception of the archives at University of Sao Paulo. And I surely will speak about what they do at Brasilia, the University of Brasilia. Elisa Bellotto, a librarian and historian, but she always tried to, uh, to, to integrate history and archival science the whole time. PhD in history and uh, very active in different specialization courses everywhere. She, she liked to travel, had very important research project in Portugal about Brazilian documents, published a lot and was very active in regarding archival profession and education, something she liked very much. Her special subjects were historical archives and diplomatics. Here you, you have three books uh, by her, everything in Portuguese, unfortunately. I went to Quick, excuse me. So, excuse me, sorry. Uh, the most important thing is that Elisa Bellotto, she, she, till the end, she was very, very eager to say the difference between record species and record types. The it's an, an article published in in, uh, in Spain. The reference is below. But the difference is record species, for example, a contract, you know what it has to contain in general. And the record types, example, an employment contract. It's always a contract. But you know, again, the special sort of information that an employment contract has to contain. And in our Brazilian tradition, everything goes to this idea of record types. This forms the record series. And this is our basis of everything we think. Because the same ty types of record types uh, are different types, but when related to the same activity, form a record series. And record series are the basis for everything, for us in our tradition here. So the organizational principle, that's the only thing I will highlight here, is based on something you also know, uh, comes from Schellenberg, the function, activities, and transactions, but in our case, special attention to record series, the result of the identification of record types related to the same activity, and so thus having same disposal dates or preservation definition. And then we have Ana Maria de Almeida Camargo. They both worked a lot together. It was uh, a duo, a very good and, and productive duo. Also historian, but with an, another sort of profile. She uh, liked collections of rare documents, was completely obsessive in regard to archives and the preservation of memory official archives also, and records as evidence against power and authoritarian organizations. Something very uh, strong in her was in her activities, also PhD in history. And together with Eluisa Bellotto, they worked. They worked the whole time. They organized together the Dictionary of Archival Terms uh, from 96, but we still use it. 
it's still a reference. And they did a lot of things together, associations, uh, the Association of Archivists of Sao Paulo was directed one by the other for a long time, uh, member of editing committees, research tutoring, everything together. They worked a lot. And <coughs> a special reference to the book in the middle, Tempi Circunstancia, it's a marvelous manual of how to work with personal archives, in this case, of the uh, former president of Brazil, Fernando Henrique Cardoso. It should be tra uh, translated, I think. Now, very quickly about Universidad São Paulo, just for the context. Uh, we think it's a lot. For you, it's not so, so much. But we are uh, uh, completing 90 years this year. It's a public uh, university sponsored by the state of Sao Paulo. You see the numbers, eight campi, it's a big university, very uh, present in different cities, lots of undergraduate stu students, graduate masters and PhDs, professors, non-teaching, hospitals, etc., etc. And it's put to be political, I would say it's the one of the best evaluated Latin American universities at USP uh, uh, they they say it's the best, but let's say it's one of the best. So at this university, this big university, the archives. The story begins in 86, when Eloisa Belotto began at USP the coordination of a specialization course in archival organization. We had never and still don't have an uh, undergraduate student uh, course in archival science. It's a pity, but it's a fact. But specialization course was once a year, we went still 208, and I helped as an apprentice. In 96, Ana Maria Camargo began to help in the course also. And so, Eloisa Belotto, Ana Maria Camargo, and I, too, always as a little apprentice, we became aware of the need of an archival system for USP. The university had local systems, but nothing for the whole. And no disposal schemes, and that was a, great, a big problem. So renowned on their experience, <coughs> we worked, worked a lot, and two years later, the system existed, began to function, and in two, five, uh, two, 205, uh, we, the general archive was officially created and had a special building for itself. The site is here, now they are in work, or all together, already faith, made a special in the English version. So what's the most important? Trying not to tell everything because we worked a lot, but since the beginning we thought we have to, to work with looking at current records. The rest is a consequence. We look at the records when they are produced and look all their journey. But at the records production moment, records are classified, identifying the activity they represent. So the record series is the most important concept. And thus we have a functional classification scheme that is overall now uh, understood was not simple because it's not simple, but now it's like that. We uh, decided also we would look at all activities, administrative and academic, because they are complementary and you can't look one part 
without thinking about the other part. So we looked at everything. And the producer's identification in this case is always preserved by a system login. So provenance principles also guaranteed. And we thought, since it's a big university, a system decentralizing activities fulfilled by different units and uh, sectors, but guided by a centralized philosophy expressed in three record management tools. The activities classification scheme, disposal list, and the glossary of record types, species, and formats. The, you see again the Elisa Bellotto and Ana Maria Camargo completely present here. So the big question, our big question is always record series. A backbone of our archival system, functional classification. At the left, you see a first level of uh, the, the function subdivision. It's not very, very original. It's something you see in other universities also. Of course, it's uh, adapted to our, uh, our tradition and how we see things, but it's not very original. <laughs> As a little example, class C, the undergraduate education had a lot of subdivisions. Here it's a little, little uh, uh, idea of what we have. And the next slide, I beg your pardon, I didn't translate, but I hope it will uh, show you how we work, what's the backbone of all our organizational principle. You have, again, uh, the great function C, undergraduate, we call it graduate, it's the undergraduate uh, teaching. Then we have one subdivision, the establishment of, of policies. And then you have the different activities fulfilled in this subdivision of the function. And then the documents that is named. I don't speak about vocabulary control in bar. Uh, 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 even if this is the, the thing I most love, I don't speak about it, but I do it. And person, people have to classify from this list. So vocabulary control is guaranteed, even if I don't speak about it, because they don't like it. And then for every series, you see what's going to happen in current, in intermediary, and then if preserved or not in, in years. And some observations about how to work. The next is the same idea. If somebody is very interested, look at our site, everything is there. But of course, in Portuguese, we can't do it otherwise for the moment. We have a little stuff. Not everything is as we would like it. But that's, I, I try to be uh, very uh, focused on the, the honor we owe to our two masters and everything that shaped our conception of what we did in the archives of USP. But not only uh, USP, because in fact, it's something we see in Brazil in very in, in lots of places. I'm now retired. I'm still consultant and passionate, but I know the the now the actual director is always present also and will also be happy to ask questions afterwards is that if there are any. So that's what I had to say. I hope with my broken English, it was you could follow me. And now I'm sure you will have bet much, uh, better English with Shirley Stokes. And I thank you. 
Thank you so much, Professor Smith. That was wonderful. And your English is superb. <laughs> no, no, I know it's not. I do what I can. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you very much. Um, and if, yes, very good. Thank you. And so, Shirley, the floor is yours. And you're muted. <laughs> Go. So I will just deliver some words for introduction, and uh, when I finish, I will turn off my camera, so I think um, it'll be better. Um, first of all, I just I have to mention how thrilled and honored I am to be part of this event organized by the Society of American Archivists. I would like also to extend my gratitude to Karen Trivedi for the invitation to give a presentation during their archival landscape series in Brazil. I would also like to thank the Society of American Archivists International Archival Affairs Section and International Council of Ar Archives Section on University and Research Institution Archives led by Dr. Caroline Brown and also Professor, also Helen. Thank you very much, Professor Helen, to be here today and also professors Johanna Smith, Clarissa Schmidt, Cynthia Roncalho, and Chiara Costa for their support. Cynthia, Chiara, and I are part of the research group uh, called Theoretical and Epistemological Foundations of Archival Science, led by Professor Cynthia, and backed by the Brazilian National Council for Scientific and Technological Development. Well, I cannot fail to mention how privileged we are in Brazil to have 107 federal universities and a public health system. So long live our free, high quality and public universities and health system. So now I will stop to, can I, I cannot find where I can stop to share my camera maybe? Um, your camera is actually shared. You just need oh. to present your slideshow in full. Oh, okay, okay. Oh. Okay. So looks great. Okay, fantastic. So, okay, Professor. Uh, as Professor Johanna already mentioned, it was uh, thanks to Professor Eloisa Liberal Belotto's vision and Tyrell as a fourth that the archival program at many Brazilian universities was shaped, pushing us towards excellence and practical know-how. She was a driving force for getting the records and archival science undergraduate program of the ground and the University of Brasilia, as well as being our first coordinator. Since last year, I'm the current coordinator of this program, having graduated from the undergraduate course and have obtained my master's and doctorate from the University of Brasilia. So this nice, very nice lady was as uh, a huge inspiration for all of us in Brazil, also Professora Maria Camargo. Unfortunately, she passed away, they both passed away last year. So as all of you are aware, Brasilia is the capital of Brazil, having replaced our previous two capitals, Rio, and Salvador in 1960, when the new capital was inaugurated. Brasilia is uh, special because it is actually a planned city, as well as for being focused on organization, education, and fresh new ideas. The city boasts of many emblematic sites, such as ministries, role, the huge monumental axis, the three powers square, and that stunning, as you can see, this the three powers square, and this uh, stunning metropolitan cathedral, and of course, the University of Brasilia itself. Um, it is, uh, we cannot speak of the University of Brasilia without mentioning the mastermind behind this its creation, this charismatic, fantastic, you know, guy uh, called Darcy Ribeiro, 
uh, I used to say that I am Darcy Nete, very big fan of Darcy Ribeiro. Darcy had many roles. Uh, he was uh, an uh, anthropologist, sociologist, professor, writer, indigenous rights advocate, and a politician. His influence in setting up the University of Brasilia dates back to 1960, when he was the Minister of Education. Darcy married Bertha Gleiser in 1948. She was also an anthropologist and played a huge role in Brasilio, um, Brazilian anthropology. Together, they performed a lot of uh, field work studying indigenous cultures in Brazil, and were quite involved in supporting indigenous communities. Berta was also influential in the Brazilian feminist movement, pushing for uh, women's roles in science. Um, let me see if it was this. No, not passing. Okay, let me back. Okay, in 1964, uh, military coup uh, d'etat occurred in Brazil and many intellectuals artists and politicians, including Darcy and Berta, were arrested and exiled. Darcy even joined a massive pro protest against the dictatorship and ended up spending nine months in jail. Berta and others fought, fought hard for, for his release. After getting out, they went into exile again, traveling through countries like Venezuela, Chile, and Peru. In Chile, Darcy even worked as an educational consultant. So Darcy came back to Brazil in 1976, right when political prisoners started getting amnesty. He continued his political journey, getting elected as senator and dedicating himself to public education. In 1992, Darcy joined the Brazilian Academy of Letters and he was recognized all over for his work and activism. He even received honorary degrees from universities like the Sorbonne and the University of Copenhagen. This is um, a memorial called Darcy Ribeiro. It's uh, in our campus at the University of Brasilia. And the, the, the shape uh, reminds like a kiss. So the name of this building is Beijódromo, like a kiss building. And uh, inside of this, uh, there is a uh, Darcy Ribeiro Foundation, so uh, who runs this place, uh, the, uh, memorial, the memorial, Darcy Ribeiro. And inside they have like this permanent exhibition with the whole material related to the, the life of Darcy Ribeiro. Unfortunately, in 1997, we lost Darcy to cancer. But his legacy endures, not least through his idea of creating the Sambodromo of Marquês de Sapucaí, like this place, beautiful place, where our samba parades are held, which was named in his honor. So the Sambodromo, this place is also officially named as Professor Darcy Ribeiro. Uh, as for the University of Brazil itself, Darcy Ribeiro labeled it as the necessary university. It was established in 1962 to become something more than just another Brazilian university focused on teaching and research. From its inception, thanks to visionaries such as Darcy Ribeiro and Anísio Teixeira, and also Oscar Niemeyer, the, our big, bigger, biggest uh, maybe architecture, uh, uh, but uh, our university was designed to address and find solutions for Brazil's challenges. UNB respects two fundamental principles, upholding international standards of knowledge and seeking resolutions to national issues. So uh, our university was intended to be a beacon of reform for all universities in the in the, in the independent center for study and an intellectual and scientific lab. It aimed to be sustainable and innovative, poised to represent the modernity and development that Brazil yearned for, equipped with its own resources to guarantee autonomy. 
university's unique legal and organizational characteristics is a result of its creation alongside and simultaneously with a foundation which bears a similar name, the University of Brasilia Foundation. Despite, uh, despite the initial project being blocked by the military dictatorship, which led to the mass dismissal of professors in the mid of 1960s, our university has grown to become one of the premier universities in Brazil. It's renowned for its commitment to provide the excellent free public education. It was the pioneer among federal universities in Brazil to implement affirmative action policies for African Brazilian and indigenous students. So today the University of Brasilia has 26 institutes and colleges encompassing 50 three departments and offering a wide array of programs, including 136 undergraduate courses, 86 master's degree courses, and 68 doctoral degree courses. These places at university uh, were uh, our forefront of education excellence reflected in its high ranking within the Ministry of Education's ratings. The University of Brazil stands a testament to the vision of its founders, embodying the principles of a university that's not only necessary, but also revolutionary in its approach to higher education and its commitment to societal uh, education. So before discussing the College of Information Science and the Record and the Archival Science Program here at the University of Brasilia, it's important to mention that we now have in Brazil, 16 of those undergraduate archival programs spread ac across our country. I don't know, I cannot uh, show all the lists, but we have 16 undergraduate um, programs in Brazil. The College of Information Science uh, was first known as the College of uh, Library and Scientific Information Science back in September 1965. Originally, it was just a part of the Central Institute of Human Science, but it became independent in 1966. In 1970, it joined the College of Applied Social Science, which included departments like law, administration, lab library science, and communication. But finally, in 1991, we added the archival science and the graduate program to this college. In July 2010, the department uh, evolved in what we now call the College of Information Science. Today, our college is overseeing a graduate program in information science, which offers both doctoral and master programs. Plus, we have three undergraduate programs, library science, record and archival science and museology. Our professors are well known both in Brazil and internationally for their research and professional contributions. As for our alumni, many have been hired by the public administration and the private sector. As for the undergraduate program in record and archival science at our university, hold on just a little bit. Uh, the program was established, as I mentioned, in 1991, offering evening classes. The whole program is spread over six semesters. Right now, we've got nearly 300 students enrolled. 300. And with Brasilia being an important place for record and archive-related jobs, our students have the chance to receive paid internship offers right from their first semester. Fantastic, I know. We are proud to have a team of 14 professors, most of whom have doctoral degrees and several even have completed postdoctoral studies. More than 70% of our alumni are out there in their field as employees of the government and earning good salaries. Just last year, when the Minister of Education completed it, completed their evaluations, our program topped the charts. This was um, uh, every uh, beginning of the semester, we organized something called Welcome and uh, I, inaugural uh, 
um, class. So this uh, was the, the year ago when you uh, pay a tribute to Professor Belotto. So that's a huge um, event. And uh, also we have like uh, alumni, Elizabeth Maya. She is an archivist in a government um, 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 place, but she also a uh, singer. So she sung like a samba, a root samba, samba de raiz for us. Um, so let me show you the next one. So, uh, and with a Brazilian being an important place of record and archive related jobs, our students have the chance to receive a pay paid internship offers right from their first, oh, okay. Um, I, okay, we scored the highest among all undergraduate courses at the University of Brasilia in 2023. Like since 2019, we're uh, waiting for this uh, moment. And finally, we have this moment. So when the University of Brasilia was initially conceived, its blueprint featured a central library and museums for Brazilian civilization and science. But intriguingly, a central archive was not part of the plan. It was not until 1986 that a focus work group was established to manage the university documents, leading to the inception of the Documentation and Study Center on the University of Brasilia. The founders of the university, um, Anísio Teixeira, as I mentioned, and Darcy Ribeiro, Oscar Maia, did not initially include an archive in their plans. Darcy Ribeiro hinted in his writings that significant documents were to be stored in the library, suggesting archives were seen as an integral aspect of university operations managed across various departments. Uh, so archival science courses were not yet offered in federal universities at the time, with our university starting its own program only in the 90s. In 1986, the university established the Documentation and Archive Center, which was later renamed the Documentation Center in 1988. In 2014, the center was extinguished and the Center of Archive of University of Brasilia was created in its place. Since 2012, the university has conducted annual workshops uh, to educate the community about effective document management. These initiatives, along with the strategic collaborations with the College of Information Science, have significantly improved archival practice, especially after electronic information system, say, was implemented in 2015. This system marked a pivotal step in modernized document management and was integral to the de development of the Central Archive. Today, the Central Archive is a testament to the university's commitment to preserving and accessing its rich history. The team comprises 16 archivists, all of whom earn, earned their undergraduate degrees from our archival science course, along with an administrator and 18 administrative technicians. This skill team plays a crucial role in managing the university's archive system, ensuring the preservation of institutional memory and the access accessibility of information. So now uh, a crucial topic that not only impacts the scientific community, but also all of Brazil universities is the management of science archives, particularly within the University of Brasilia and other science institutions across Brazil. Science archives are a treasure, uh, troves of knowledge, storing records from our quest of discovery. Understanding the complex web of their creation, organization, communication, and dissemination uh, is crucial. Public and federal universities in Brazil funded by public agencies play a key role in safeguarding our scientific heritage, essential for advancing knowledge. This crucial topic was part of a recent master's thesis by Chiara Costa, advised by Professor Cynthia and co-advised by myself. So Chiara and Cynthia 
uh, are with us today in this presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, the methods and techniques employed include a bibliography, research, and, an and an analysis of websites related to science institutions within Brazil's national system of science, technology, and innovation. Together, first-hand sites, a survey uh, was conducted in which a questionnaire was sent to 110 University uh, of Brasilia professors with queries reg regarding the scientific archives, which provided valuable da data for our analysis. Shirley? Oi, hello. Hi, about five oh. minutes. Okay, I will, I will go fast. In 2022, Tiara received a distinguished award in recognition of her exceptional technical scientific dissertation thesis research conducted at the uh, University of Brasilia. So let um, for this, this is our um, national system of science technology that she uh, analyzed. And um, I want to uh, uh, wrap, uh, wrap up things uh, with the growing importance of open science, citizen science, open government and open data enhanced communication and collaboration among Brazilian science institution are imperative. Only through United efforts can we ensure the safeguarding and accessibility of our scientific heritage crucial for national program. Uh, uh, Brazilian institution involved in science, scientific knowledge of production must recognize the importance of organizing, preserving, and facilitating access to si science archives learning from countries like Australia, United States, France, and United Kingdom, which effectively manage their science archive is crucial. Uh, in summary, the urgent need to revisit, uh, review discussions about science archive policies across all science sectors is evident. Effective management, use, reuse, preservation, and accessibility of archives can lead to significant ad advancements in uh, science and we need to make this in Brazil. So thank you for listening and I welcome any questions or discussion on this vital subject. Sorry, thank you very much. Oh, thank you so much. Wonderful. Everybody take a screenshot of the references. <laughs> oh, <it's fine. laughs> thank you so much, Shirley oh, well, and okay. Johanna. Um, I'm going to with my colleague uh, Ellen monitor the chat. So again, I'm inviting you to put any questions or comments in the chat. Um, and I'll kick things off uh, uh, with Professor uh, Smith. Um, I wondered if you could tell us, um, other than Schellenberg, what uh, figures have uh, figured prominently in the education of archivists from the United States? Can I, can I answer? Um, oh. uh, Schellenberg, of course, but we have a lot of uh, sp Spanish uh, and Spanish, Italian, uh, Luciana Duganti in Canada. I'm not answering you, I know, but uh, <laughs> I don't remember now a lot of, of the names. But I, I, I'll have to think about it. Excuse That's me. That's just fine. That's just fine, Shirley. Uh, oh, I think we have um, um, many like uh, uh, important authors uh, from U.S. like Schellenberg, of course, and uh, Richard Cox. And, uh, I can think about more because sometimes we make a confusion with um, authors from Canada, like Terry mm. Eastwood, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Terry Cook, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. but uh, John Roberts also from US and, uh, but you have like a main, uh, Antonia Heredia, Spain, um, and Michel Duchamp, France. Mm -hmm. So, but in, we, especially now with this record management con uh, conception, we use a lot of uh, authors from US and mm. uh, and also uh, the 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 journey of uh, the American archivist yeah? the American archivist journey uh, it's a, a journal it's a very well known 
uh, publish, you know, material here. So we we used to assign to have this material in, you know, all universities, but for sure Schellenberg mm -hmm. is the mm -hmm. biggest one. Yeah. Um, I also think that uh, Richard Cox now is like a contemporary uh, author. Mm -hmm. uh, Kari's put in the chat that several Brazilian PhDs in digital preservation have referenced and used Nancy McGovern's work. Yeah. Kari, do you want to speak to that at all? Not to put you on the spot. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, when I was, uh, uh, I was invited to go down to uh, Brazil a few years ago, be uh, actually before the pandemic, and um, present and talk at the um, Cinepred uh, Digital Preservation uh, Conference. And I was intrigued to find out that, in fact, a lot of people had used the Digital Preservation Management Workshop, but also other um, publications and things um, from the NC in in their PhDs and unfortunately not being able to read Portuguese, <laughs> it's certainly something that has put a bit of a, um, it's made, just made searching for those kinds of citations a little bit more challenging. And so, um, but there's a lot of really fantastic work going on at journal preservation and different kinds of data science uh, preservation uh, in Brazil as well, so. Yeah, I, I read that uh Carrie Smith uh, came to Brazil and to Brasilia that it's my hometown so I live in Brasilia so um when you are you know here again so let's meet you'll be like an honor mm -hmm. oh by the way all of you are welcome, <laughs> you know to Brazil it's a I think it's a different experience but it's an interesting experience you might have an onslaught of visitors <laughs> yeah no, no no problem you're no, welcome no problem oh, yeah, you can you know like uh have many friends you know you can be mi casa su casa my home your home beautiful uh, but uh, <laughs> but yes uh just to compliment uh not only because this conception of our archival science in it's like a foundational and principal basis but also more than ever this digital and this conception of uh, we have many, you use a lot works from US. Mm. I think it's like a, this digital conception and preservation and uh, and uh, it's very important for us. I'm, I'm still not answering you <laughs> because I don't remember. <laughs> I'm getting old. But I remember the uh, 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 the in in German, Hermine Haritz, who mm -hmm. has a very interesting work relating archives to the administration, mm. Mm. not the historical view, the administrative view. We 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 use it a lot, and it's inspired us a lot. Can you repeat the name? Mene Haritz. A a Angelica Mene Haritz. Angelica. Yes, it's, it's very interesting. Yeah. Well, given the emphasis, um, Professor Schmidt, on, on functions which lead to identifying series, I'm curious if any of either of you have been aware of Records in Context, the new ICA standard, relatively new. Sorry, no, I didn't okay. know. No, I just heard, but not like okay. I'm not uh, uh, delving into this the mm -hmm. subject not yet. Because I think it's the it's the idea. Yes. The function gives the 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 context of the records producing. Um, there's some posts in the chat that I want to bring to everyone's attention. Thank you, Ellen. Uh, previous sessions, as you know, this is being recorded and it will be stored with other. Uh, landscape seminars um, and the link to the YouTube channel is now in the chat um, and then also we have the link to records in context as well um, so everyone give that a look if you haven't already mm -hmm. and I will ask again are there any questions or comments I think we had one comment while you're thinking uh, Sarah says she's very proud of the UK Journal Records Management Journal that she co-edit 
uh, co-edited and published several Brazilian authors. Um, can our guests speak to, or Sarah, can you tell us some of the names of Brazilian authors that are currently uh, very active in the archival science realm? Karen, Sarah writes, give me a second. Excellent. We and will do that, Sarah. I just want to mention to everyone, especially the speakers, to please read the chats because you have many um, one warm messages of congratulations on today's presentation. Yes. Oh, fantastic. Um, let me see. Oh, yeah. Very, very nice. May I say something more? Yes. Yes. Well, I, I forgot to, to say that everything I, I told about our functional classification is uh, in the, the paper of the proceedings of ISCO proceedings of 2016. Oh. We sent you. And uh, there, the, the last phrase I would like to repeat now, mm. that each record is a sound, but the music is produced by functional classification. That's mm. wonderful. Mm. <laughs> I like it. It's beautiful no. music. <laughs> it's no, very, if I, if very I, beautiful. If I can also to, to show something, because yes. we don't have time. Oh, this oh, is the book yeah. that uh, it's mentioned by Prof Professor Johannes, mm -hmm. Time mm -hmm. Circumstances. You know, uh, they have like a part translated in English. Um, oh, uh, maybe if you can find uh, in uh, because this is uh, produced by the uh, publisher house called uh, Institute of uh, Fernando Henrique Cardoso, our former president, and they have a English version at the end, so you can have like a conception of this um, work. Because it's, it's interesting how Professor Ana Maria Camargo, because in the United States, you have like a, the um, a presidential libraries. Yes. Mm -hmm. and uh, But from the, the Obama, uh, uh, the time of Obama, because the, the if I'm not uh, wrong uh, with the problem of a budget, uh, we you um, uh, transfer all the records to archival, a national archive. There is no uh, Obama uh, Library presidential. Yes, Obama Library presidential, like others, and so because they because of money, it's like uh, they transfer all the materials to our archi national archive. So in Brazil, we 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 have our documents in national archive, but uh, uh, now we have this conception of an institute. So we mm. have the Institute of Fernando Henrique Cardoso and the Institute of Lula, Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva. It's our, he was our former president, but also our current president. So mm. this conception that Ana Maria Camargo, you know, created this work was really interesting because uh, she captured all the archival sciences from all the countries and uh, Schorlenberg, uh, Angel Angelica Menejaritz, uh, Michel Duchamp, and Sue McMish, I don't know, all the those, you know, big, you know, thinking uh, thinkers. And uh, she came, she brought with this conception to think about record type and record species, as the professor yes. Anna mentioned. And it was very different. And I think for our reality, this may be this archival context. For our mm. Brazilian reality, it's better to work in this way that in another way, you know, and um, so I, and also I would I would say that uh, we should have in Brazil uh, awards with the names of this those two professors, Ana Maria Camargo and Eloisa Belotto, mm -hmm. because they are giants and uh, mm. their legacies will be forever with our archival science. Oh, Sarah um, put in the chat some records um, management professor journal authors. Moises Hockenbach. Oh, no, I know him. 
He's a, yes, fantastic. He works with like a web archiving, mm -hmm. I think. Yes. With, um, yeah, with another guy called Jonas, Jonas, I forgot his last name, but I know both of them. It's a fantastic work. Mm -hmm. And she's placed another name in the, in the chat as well. Ah, Natalia do Nascimento. No, Natalia, I don't, I don't know. Choose Thank it. you, Sarah. Thank you very much, Sarah. <laughs> I will try to, you know, uh, submit some article with you. That would be wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> I was actually going to ask about the dictionary too, because when um, it was on the screen, it was, the title was in English. So, but where do you, do you, do you ever collaborate or look to other similar products to enhance your own dictionary? Because I know there are several available to the uh, profession. Well, I think uh, we use, like I'm, I myself, when I have some, you know, because I'm translating a book with a professor, Cynthia, the, from uh, Richard Cox, all ethics, accountability, and record keeping in a dangerous, dangerous world. Uh, we are using this glossary of uh, S A. Mm. So, but I don't know because our dictionary is old. So, but that mm -hmm. time I think they they also use this 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 tool, you know, mm -hmm. archives terminology of. Um, Society of American Archivists. Yes. But I, I don't have a, like a, I don't think that you are a building or not. Mm. Um, another uh, dictionary is like a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have about two minutes. Um, I don't want to monopolize the questioning here. I do have one more question unless someone else would like to ask something. And my question is, how do the professionals um, who already conferred their degrees stay current, given the constantly changing nature of our profession? Um, can, can I ask, Professor? Mm -hmm. I yes. think in, in the case, because as I, I mentioned, Brazil is a big country mm -hmm. like U.S., so every contest you know, has your, its own reality. So in Brasilia, I think you have many, uh, many seminars, many courses, many, you know, activities of extension, like many activities, because it's the government, is the life, the core of government. So here, mm -hmm. our alumni or our professionals, you know, have this, you know, keep up, you know situation it's not yeah. so tough mm -hmm. but in general in brazil we have a many congresses you have a many events more and more because with a uh, 16 universities offering undergraduate programs so i think you know more and more you have more professionals and you have more you know people and uh, you have a award you know um give by every year but the the best uh, thesis and the master's degree you know works they have this huge event that they, mm. they, they give this award so it's also a, a big event so i think in brazil is not it's, it's tough to travel to go to us or australia you know to capture this conception these ideas in the in the route like to go there like i i really would like to to go to like a SAA uh, event, but it's not cheap, you know, because, but I think a general to capture all the, the new ideas and the new conceptions is not tough, especially with the internet. Yes, yes. Well, with that, I will bid you all a thank you for attending, for presenting, uh, for co-hosting. Uh, today's seminar and once again it's just been a joy to spend time with you all and to meet new friends and to make sure your passport is up to date because we're all going to Brasilia oh yes and Sao Paulo <laughs> oh, fantastic.
You're welcome. <laughs> so I'm going to stop recording now. Um, everyone have a wonderful rest of the day, rest of the week. Um, it's too early to say rest of the year, but I'll say it anyway. Yeah. So there we are. Um, so I'm going to stop recording. Thank you. Thank you.